Hey, good morning from Fox 69 Air Park, Dallas. I'm the Wolf Pilot. And this is gonna be your update. November 8344 Tango is AOG, another acronym for aviation, short for airplane on ground. What we got going on here today, I'll bring you up to speed. This is the Continental Geo 300 engine. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of disassembly in, in progress. So what this started out as was a massive oil leak. And let's have the cowling. I'll walk over here. Kind of see what's going on here in the lower cowling. I don't know if Steve did any cleanup on this thing. It's 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 pretty grungy. It's <laughs> Well, that's not candy coated, it's really grungy. And basically what that culminated from was a few corners got cut when Steve, who by the way, in case you guys did not know, my uncle Steve is an a &P, So he is completely able to overhaul his own engine, sign off on his work. And he does very good work, except this one time. So he cut some corners and uh, one of the corners he cut is back here and probably if in earlier videos, this uh, part of the engine is called the accessory cover. Uh, accessory cover, this is the, where you put the oil in the engine. And the accessory cover, everything bolts to that. So you've got magnetos, you've got a vacuum pump, which is gonna be going away because we're doing avionics upgrades. We've got down here, we've got the generator. On the other side here, this is a Skytech starter and then the other Magneto. Anyhow, he, the book, the great book of all things holy continental states that when you do an engine overhaul, you should take this cover and you should send it off to have it milled. Make sure it's perfectly freaking flat. PFF, perfectly freaking flat and true. And he did not do that. And one of the other things he did was down here, let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Too much miscellaneous in the way. So you got the accessory cover in the back of the engine. This guy right here is your oil pan, where all the oil is. We can kind of see down here, this is really bad. So this is not oil, this is tank sealer. This was an attempt to stop this bastard from leaking. So we're going away from that, because as you can see on my finger, that it, it didn't stop anything from leaking. So that the accessory cover is going to be coming off, magnetos coming off, vacuum pump coming off, hopefully permanently. Uh, we got to pick up two more instruments. By the way, if anybody's selling some AV30Cs, uh, Uvionics AV30Cs, uh, please let me know. I'm very interested. Um, I've got all the other gear I need to do the avionics upgrade on this on this bird, so I can start my instrument training. I sure would love a deal if you're upgrading your avionics to something else. Uh, let's see, the other major leaking point, I know it's big alt tab, sorry. Uh, on these engines, on the Continentals, the push rod, to, push rod tubes are on the bottom of the engine. And this is number five, hottest cylinder, by the way. So these things leak like a mother freaking sieve. And it's just, it is what it is and they make tools to try and go in here you can see looking in this is uh, cylinder one they make a tool you stick in there to kind of expand the tube to help it seal it it tries but I mean you're just not gonna get away from that so we're getting rid of all these push rod tubes these old factory push rod tubes and come over to the tool bench we got these if I get a close up on this RG200 TB tubes, and these are spring loaded, they have o rings and gaskets and stuff. And it's a special tool used to compress the spring, which is it's a hellacious spring, by the way. So, all the tubes are getting replaced. Kind of see over here in the parts table, having to just destroy these things to get them out because otherwise, normally these would go on you pull the head. We're not pulling the heads, uh, or the cylinders, excuse me, the cylinders. We're not pulling the cylinders on this aircraft. You can just run a sawzall through these damn things and get rid of them. Uh, before you ask, yes, uh, we are heating caution. And you can see here in this tube, there's a wad of paper. 
And so what we're doing is, while these are in the engine, we're stuffing a bunch of shop paper towels down here so when we cut it, there will not be any metal going down into the engine or into the push or into the uh, lifter. And uh, come back over here to the engine. You can see, see this is this is a lifter right here. And uh, anyway, oh, well, we got visitors. So uh, anyhow, that is your update. We are AOG for going to be for a little while. We got lots of things going on with 44 Tango and uh, might even have a, a visitor dropping in to, to uh, check on us as uh, we get further working on this thing. All right, we're cutting back in here in our work day out here at Fox 69. So we are now removing the push rod tubes in the bottom of this GO300 engine. And you can see, I've been driving these things out. They were in here like this, and then it drove out. And then this was the other end of it, and it went back into here with this with this rubber piece. Yep, rubber piece. And, and the rubber piece was held on by those by these cor Corbin clamps that go in here and here, and these they're really hard to get off. So the way we're getting these out because you can't you can't get a pliers on them and move them; they're so tight that this is the exact diameter is one of the ones I cut out. So I just use that as the template to drive the old one out. And it's almost out. And it's out. Bada bing, bada bam, bada boom. So, so this is the rocker shaft and the rockers are on this push rods go inside these tubes and this is the exhaust valve and this is the intake valve this is the one plug on the bottom and then this is the other spark plug on the top two spark plugs per cylinder <clears throat> and then this these are the lifters themselves that that are pushed on one end against they're against the camshaft and they ride in and out and then the inside of them are the hydraulic lifters that push on the push rod. So this is a typical push rod engine which is the way the old cars used to use it except the cars now the cam drives directly to the uh, to the rockers. So and then these are the exhaust uh, tubes and these little holes in the exhaust tubes or where the, uh, exhaust, the EGT probes exhaust go. gas sensor sits for each cylinder. So, so you have you have cylinder head temperature through here of each cylinder, and then you have exhaust gas temperature sensor here for each cylinder, and you have two spark plugs per cylinder. So you have uh, an ignition, a magneto firing the bottom plugs and the magneto firing the top plugs, but they, they do it a little bit differently. They usually use the right magneto to drive the upper right plugs and the lower left plugs, and then the left magneto does just the opposite. It drives the left uppers and, and the right lowers. Huh, okay. Except on this engine, the right mag drives the top and the left mag drives the bottom. And, and that's all specified in the engine manual. <laughs> I, I've run it both ways, and people do it both ways, but the manual says do it uh, right and left, have, have you, top and bottom. Have you noticed any performance gains or losses? No. Or just anything to separate the two no. theories? No. Okay. The, 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 the issue behind why you do it is the plugs have a polarity, uh, the way they're hooked up, and they, they wear in uh, with that polarity. In other words, either the electrode or the anode wears first, depending on the polarity. And so that's why you run one mag doing the tops and one mag running the bottom. So huh, it's, okay. it's, in this course, this is a carbureted engine. And then this is the intake tube. That's a carburetor. It goes up through the carburetor, through the pan, which is hot oil. Uh, and then the fuel goes into the uh, 
uh, intake tubes and then goes into each of the intake sides, which are here, here, here. Now, no, it, it's, it doesn't make sense why it's designed that way. Why do you want to put hot fuel, which is heated by your hot oil, into your intake tubes? You would really have, you'd really want cold fuel, which is higher density, going into your intake tubes. But aircraft engines do it differently than car engines. Well, an aircraft engine is flying at an altitude where it gets very, very cold, and you have a lot of cold air, you have car ice is a thing. Um, not to mention, you're on a, running an air-cooled engine versus a water-cooled engine. Now, if that plays into it much, but... So it we does. got... And so the oil runs, the, the oil will run back, the oil comes out through the push rods, it lubricates this whole top part of the cylinder the oil runs back through the tubes themselves back into uh, and and back into this area and then goes through that hole into the engine so the places where you can leak oil on a continental engine is this joint right here which is just swedged in or this joint right here which just is a, uh, a gasket and either place is notorious for leaking oil and that's what we're trying to do we're solving that by putting uh, an stt stc kit which means supplemental type certificate kit for this engine on it which will use wedge shaped gaskets to uh, and a spring to mount a, a pressure mount here or a pressure seal here and a pressure seal here and stop that stop that oil so yeah i was showing that to the viewers just a little while ago said so those they're setting over on the tool bench and that's a far better design than than these silly things here where you actually had this end of the tube pushed into this into the back or the the head back here there's i mean it's literally just a friction fit there's nothing there's no gasket there there's nothing and on some of these, you can look in here. Steve has a tool that he actually inserted into the tube from, from with the valve cover off, and and he tighten it, and it would expand out little ball bearings that would actually go inside there. You can almost see it in this one. And it would it would push and and try to push this tube outward to, to decrease the clearance between the tube, the outside of the tube, and this hole in the head. There, there's one where you can see it real easy. Yep. See that where the, it, the the bad news is if you don't tighten the ball tight enough, your oil leaks around it. Mm -hmm. If you tighten it too tight, then you you can basically cut this tube with the ball bearing. So that's a real dicey thing. And generally, that's all built up by the guy that builds the the cylinders. If they're new cylinders, it's done at the factory, or if it's a certified cylinder guy, then he knows uh, how much pressure to put on those balls to seal them correctly. Uh, but nobody seems to use a, a sealant itself. They just are swedged in there, and obviously they, they leak. Hmm. Well, we are fixing that problem with an STC kit, and uh, I was talking a bit earlier on the video about uh, the acce rear accessory cover that's also been a, a tremendous source of oil We've got the tank sealer on there, but that's just not, it's just not working out as, as expected. So we're pulling that off and resealing that and doing, got a brand new gasket from Air Power sitting there waiting to go on. Yeah. So anyway, to, 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 uh, to go a little further, you take the uh, accessory case off, which is this case right here, yep. which mates so, to the back of the engine. And why it's called an accessory case is all the accessories bolt to it. Mm -hmm. So this one is the wet oil pump. Wet oil pump. We and and of course, most, a lot of the planes today use a dry oil pump, but they still uh, are driven off of this gear. Uh, you have your magnetos. You have a right magneto and a left magneto. And they're driven off of the, uh, of the gears in the auxiliary case. You have the, in this case, it's a generator and it's driven off of the uh, the gears from the back of the engine. And then down here, you have a, uh, it used to originally had an oil screen and there's an STC kit to put in a remote oil filter. And so it, it screws into that hole and you have to take those off. So once we get all of that off and the spark starter has to come off, uh, then we ought to be able to loosen these bolts and take this accessory housing, which is this area right here, off 
and put a whole new gasket on the whole thing and, and seal it up. And that gasket seals all the way from the pan to here and then the case of the engine from here all the way to the top. And that is a one piece gasket. And and I would alluded to, or not alluded, I would said before one of the one of the deviations that you've done is when you put this together last time, you actually cut the gasket because it went down into the oil pan. There was some sort of... Uh... The answer is if you remove, you can remove the oil pan without taking the accessory case off, mm -hmm. but you usually destroy that half of the gasket when you do it. Okay. So you have to put a new gasket on the oil pan and then you have to take an original gasket and cut it to do just this bottom part. Okay. Because you never disturb the top part. But when you cut a gasket, as, as Bill Global says, you're asking for trouble. And, and the trouble uh, is, is that, it's called an oil leak. Yep. and. Uh... Of course, big shout out to Bill Goble, Chief Executive Rat at Hangar Rats. And uh, I, I think if you're not a subscriber to his channel, you need to go to Hangar Rats, subscribe to his channel. Uh, he is a wealth, a wealth of knowledge, information, and experience. And uh, I am grateful. I am grateful for him to be there <laughs> to teach me a thing or three because I am, I mean, I am all things aviation. I, I, I want to fly them. I want to fix them. Hopefully, I never crash them, because then I might be on this guy's channel that that's you know always talking about crashes and don't want to do that. Um, so anyway, folks, uh, let me. I'll fade out on this one here. There's, this is going to be a longer video, I suspect, but uh, we're making headway on that. So we get the. Uh, we got, uh, oh, we have all the push rods out. They're all gone. So the next thing we'll be do, probably doing some cleanup on the, on the uh, rear mating surfaces. Uh, let me get underneath there so I can get a good shot. Oh man, heavens to Betsy. Okay, we are looking at the underside of the cylinders and that's the backside, backside where the mating surfaces are. So I need to get in there. All that needs to be clean. Those holes need to be clean for everything to mate up properly. And with that, I fade to black. Stay tuned.